Hi everyone, in today's video we'll talk about ISO. What's the true concept of ISO, how it can impact your photos, and also why a lower ISO isn't always the best option. We will also see how ISO interacts with aperture, shutter speed in different types of photography like landscapes, portraits, street photography, and fast action photography. And as a bonus tip, I'll show you how Auto ISO can be a powerful tool when you need flexibility and speed. So without any further ado, let's get started. The most common definition of ISO is the sensitivity of your camera sensor to light. But that's not entirely true. In digital cameras, the sensitivity we refer to with ISO is related to the ability of the sensor to capture light. Originally in analog photography, ISO was directly related to the chemicals used in the film emulation, which determined the film's ability to react to light. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive the film was to light, allowing photographers to shoot in darker environments. In digital cameras, this isn't true. The sensor captures the available light and then converts it into electrical signals. These signals are then amplified electronically by a gain circuit to make the image more visible. The ISO setting in a digital camera is essentially an adjustment of the electronic gain applied to those signals. In conclusion, digital ISO isn't really about the sensor sensitivity, but about the electronic adjustment that increases the signal's intensity, resulting in a brighter image, but with a possible increase in noise. This is particularly important when you're shooting in low light, but always remember that ISO is just one part of the exposure triangle. Along with aperture and shutter speed, ISO also determines your image's exposure. To better understand this, let's look at the exposure triangle. Aperture controls the amount of light coming in and also affects the depth of field, how much of your scene is in focus. Shutter speed controls how motion is captured, either freezing or blurring the movement. ISO adjusts the so-called sensitivity of the sensor, which allows you to get the correct exposure in a variety of lighting conditions. In landscape photography, we typically use a low ISO to keep the image clean and free from noise. This is especially true when shooting during the day with plenty of natural light. A good range is ISO 100 to 200. With a narrow aperture like f8 or f11, we can ensure that the entire scene remains in focus. But don't forget, if you're shooting in low light, like after the sunset, or if you're doing long exposures, you might need to use a tripod to keep your camera steady and prevent motion blur from slow shutter speeds. In portrait photography, we often use a wider aperture, such as f1.8 or f2.8, to create a pleasing background blur that's also known as bokeh. However, if you shoot in low light conditions, this means that less light is hitting the sensor, so you may need to increase the ISO to keep the exposure correct. But be careful not to push it too high, or you may introduce noticeable noise into your skin tones. Street photography often requires quick decisions and adaptability. You want a fast shutter speed to freeze the action, but the light can change quickly. In these cases, ISO 800 to 1600 may be your best friend. With automatic ISO, the camera will adjust for you as the light conditions change. Fast action photography demands fast shutter speeds, typically 1 1000 or faster, to freeze the motion. In good light, ISO up to 1600 might be enough, but in low light, you may have to push it up to 3200 or even higher. Now you might be thinking, but what if I don't have time to manually adjust my ISO? Well, that's where Auto ISO comes in. It's a fantastic tool for fast-paced situations like street or event photography. In most modern cameras, you can set limits to prevent your ISO from going too high ensuring you don't end up with grainy shots. For example, set your max ISO to 3200 and the camera will adjust it automatically and dynamically while keeping the exposure balanced. This gives you freedom to focus on composition and timing without worrying about settings. So there you have it. ISO is not about getting the lowest number possible. It's about understanding 
how it works with aperture and shutter speed to get the best exposure possible. Use ISO wisely and don't forget that auto ISO can help you in a pinch. If you found this video useful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks. Till next time, happy shooting!